Imagine a sound, not just any sound but a deep, earth-shaking roar that tears the sky apart. This was the voice of the Avro Vulcan, Britain's iconic Cold War bomber. For those who heard it, the sound was unforgettable, a declaration of strength that echoed across the tense decades of the Cold War. The Vulcan was more than an aircraft, it was a symbol of a nation's resolve, a guardian against an ever-present threat. Its story is one of breathtaking innovation and high-stakes drama. The Vulcan's vast white delta wing looked like it had flown straight from a science fiction novel. When it first appeared, people stopped in their tracks, awestruck by this futuristic machine. The Vulcan represented a leap into the unknown, a bold gamble on new aviation technology. This is the story of that incredible machine and the people who brought it to life. To understand the Vulcan is to understand the hopes and fears of a generation living under the shadow of the atomic bomb. This is the epic story of the Avro Vulcan, Britain's Cold War guardian, whose legacy continues to inspire awe to this day. The end of World War II didn't bring lasting peace. Instead, a new, chilling conflict emerged. The alliance between the West and the Soviet Union fractured, replaced by deep mistrust and the Iron Curtain dividing Europe. This was the dawn of the Cold War, fought with espionage and the threat of nuclear annihilation. Britain, exhausted and economically drained, faced a new reality. Its superpower status was challenged by the US and the Soviet Union. The atomic bomb had changed warfare forever, future conflicts would be unimaginably destructive. Britain's leaders knew they needed their own independent nuclear deterrent, not just American protection. The primary threat was the Soviet Union's vast Red Army, poised in Eastern Europe. The only credible counter was the threat of nuclear retaliation. Deterrence became Western defense policy. To make this deterrent real, Britain needed a bomber that could deliver a nuclear weapon deep into the Soviet Union. The stage was set for the creation of a revolutionary aircraft. In 1947 the British Ministry of Supply issued a challenge, design a strategic bomber with capabilities that seemed like science fiction. It had to carry a 10,000-pound nuclear bomb over 1,500 nautical miles, striking deep inside the Soviet Union. The bomber needed to cruise at 575 miles per hour and reach 50,000 feet, unmatched by any aircraft at the time. To meet this, several British manufacturers were invited to compete, leading to the birth of the V-bombers, the Valiant, Victor, and Vulcan. The Valiant was conventional, but the Victor and Vulcan were radical, representing the future of high-speed, high-altitude flight. For Avro, this was a daunting challenge and a golden opportunity. Their chief designer, Roy Chadwick, knew a conventional design wouldn't work. They needed a shape that could slice through the air with minimal drag. Their search led to one of the most elegant aerodynamic designs ever conceived. Avro's engineers, led by Roy Chadwick and Stuart Davies, faced a formidable puzzle how to design a bomber stable at low speeds yet efficient near the speed of sound. Straight wings created too much drag, swept wings had stability issues. The answer was the delta wing, a triangular shape with incredible potential. Its highly swept leading edge was perfect for high-speed flight, while its large area provided lift for heavy bomb loads at high altitude. Structurally, the delta wing was strong and light, maximizing range and altitude. The deep wing route allowed engines, bomb bay and fuel to be buried inside, creating a streamlined profile. It was a bold, unproven concept for a bomber but Avro built small research aircraft, the Avro 707S, to test it. These mini Vulcans provided vital data and confidence. The elegant triangle unlocked the future of British air power. The Vulcan's shape was as revolutionary as its mission. The Vulcan's creation was driven by brilliant minds but marked by tragedy. At the heart was Roy Chadwick, Avro's chief designer and the genius behind the Lancaster bomber. Chadwick championed the Delta Wing but tragically died in a crash before seeing his vision fly. His loss was a devastating blow, but his deputy, Stuart Davies, took up the mantle. Davies rallied the team, determined to honor Chadwick's legacy. The project became more than engineering, it was a tribute to their fallen leader. Under Davies the team overcame countless hurdles, driven by purpose and resilience, Every blueprint and rivet was a step toward fulfilling Chadwick's dream. The Vulcan became a testament to both engineering prowess and the human spirit. Great achievements often come at great human cost. The Vulcan's story is one of triumph born from adversity. Building a revolutionary aircraft is one thing, proving it can fly is another. Avro's chief test pilot, Roly Falk, was chosen to fly the Vulcan prototype for the first time in 1952. Thousands watched, 
as the delta-winged machine lifted gracefully into the air, a moment of triumph. The Vulcan proved to be a superb flying machine, stunning crowds with a barrel roll at the Farnborough Air Show. But test flying was fraught with danger, pilots pushed the aircraft to its limits venturing into unknown territory. Every flight carried risks, unforeseen quirks or failures could be fatal. In 1958 tragedy struck when a Vulcan's wing failed during an air show, killing the crew and bystanders. The investigation led to crucial modifications, making the Vulcan safer for future crews. Test pilots were true pioneers, risking their lives for progress. Each lesson learned made the Vulcan a better, safer aircraft. The sacrifices of these early crews were not in vain, their courage paved the way for decades of service. The Vulcan's legacy is built on both innovation and bravery. The Avro Vulcan was a masterpiece of engineering, powered by four mighty Bristol Olympus engines buried in its delta wings. This immense power let the 80-ton bomber leap into the sky and climb above 55,000 feet out of reach of most threats. Inside, a crew of five operated in a cramped, pressurized cabin, two pilots up front, three rear crew in the coal hole below. Their world was one of radar screens, charts, and complex electronics, guiding the Vulcan across thousands of miles. The Vulcan's most famous trait was its sound, the legendary Vulcan howl, a deep, bone-shaking roar during takeoff. For those near RAF bases, it was the sound of Britain's nuclear shield. The Vulcan's rapid climb was its main defense, get high, get fast, stay above the threat. Early on, Soviet fighters struggled to reach its cruising altitude. The crew in high-altitude suits looked down on the world from the edge of space. They were silent sentinels, guardians of peace, flying the pinnacle of British aviation. The Vulcan's howl became the acoustic signature of an era. For over two decades the Avro Vulcan was the backbone of Britain's nuclear deterrent. Stationed at RAF bases the V-Force was kept on constant alert, crews ready to scramble at a moment's notice. The tension was immense, a silent vigil against a war that must never happen. The Vulcan's existence sent a clear message. Britain had the will and means to retaliate against aggression. Mutually assured destruction, MAD, kept the peace through the threat of devastation. The Vulcan achieved its mission by never being used in anger. It was a symbol of peace through strength. As Soviet missiles improved, the Vulcan adapted, flying low-level missions, racing just above the ground to avoid radar. This demanded immense skill and courage from its crews. The Vulcan excelled in its new role, serving until the early 1980s. Its only combat mission came in the 1982 Falklands War, flying the legendary Black Buck raids. The Vulcan's legacy is one of peace, not war, a symbol of British innovation and resolve. For a generation it was the ultimate guardian during the most dangerous period in modern history. The Vulcan remains an icon, a testament to those who dared to build a machine from the future.